Hello, MikeKib143 here. I'm here today to show you how to make mini TVs in Adobe After Effects. This effect I made up all by myself, so if someone already thought of this before me, my bad, I haven't seen your video. Alright, let's get started. You're going to want to import footage of you just, you know, moving your hands. Drag your video down here into the timeline so it makes it comp size and have footage of you like moving your hand and um you know making like motion like a TV's appearing you're probably going to want to name your footage whatever you want we'll name it hands just because we might use a lot of videos in it and we don't want to get confused with everything else shut the audio off unless you have um come you know, like you talking then you're going to import your TV show or you know anything it's good for advertising yourself then you're gonna wanna make sure it's on top of your other video this one is the Gohan versus Cell thing you're gonna wanna make it like a look like a widescreen TV dragging off the side find that frame using the page up and page down to find when your TV should appear mine appears about right here at least that's where I want it so I want to shrink this up so it, there's action going on when I snap it. Okay, cool. So that's when the TV appears. So drag it above your hand. What you're going to do is hit, hold down, click your video, your TV show or whatever. Hold down Shift, hit P, wait, hit P, then Shift T to bring up position and opacity. Then what you're going to do is hit F4 or down here toggle switch modes to bring up this little bar here and for your TV show you're going to want to make it a 3D layer by clicking this 3D cube and enabling that that brings up all this orientation, X rotation, and Y rotation all for a 3D layer a very important in the video you're going to want to keyframe hit the stopwatch to keyframe position, orientation, and opacity you're going to want to make the opacity for the first frame 15 so it's just faintly visible like it's appearing out of thin air now if when I'm snapping my hand or whatever my it looks like the video should be coming in this way or this way it doesn't matter so I'm gonna make it this way so use the orientation and if you pull click it and pull right it rotates right and that's about the angle I want and then you can just click the video on the the um, screen and drag it where you want it and this all keyframes it so your next frame where your hands down here you can drag it and that frame up there is saved that's what keyframing is basically drag the f video and rotate it wherever you want it the next opacity is 65 make sure the opacity is the same as mine unless you want to experiment around uh, just so it looks like it has a motion you may even want to add motion blur which I did not do but motion blur affects the whole video well no you could add it as an effect then you go to the next frame. My hand seems to be coming back up, so I'm going to drag the video back up a bit. You want it levitating what looks like a good couple inches, but that's only a little bit on the screen. Again, adjust the orientation. I'll make my orientation about two positions already. Next um, opacity is 95. Next frame goes up even more, so we're going to put it, we're going to like adjust it there. Click orientation to make it zero whenever you want it perfectly aligned. Positions keyframe. And then you're obviously your final opacity is 100. You're not going to be messing with the opacity again uh, unless you're doing another video over here. So just do this frame by frame or, you know, every couple of frames. Just move it around. Okay. I'm going to so position it basically until you're about ready to throw. I'm going to fast forward this part of me moving the thing around. So here we are. If we go up a couple of frames, we see that my hand is rotating and throwing it away. So I'm sure, going to show you now how to animate that part. So we're about two or three frames ahead of that, uh, where you're throwing it. 
go down until you see your hand moving. You're going to want to animate that going with it. Now we can see my fingers are curling like my hand is rotating the video. Um, I didn't do this in what you saw, but I may want to adjust the Y rotation, which basically does um, this. I could reverse the whole video if I wanted. But um, I might want to just slightly adjust it where it looks like it's turning with my hand. Go to my next frame. We can see that my hand is going down and it's more turned in, so I might turn that a bit more and give it a bit of orient give it a bit orientation there. So, oh boy, it was not keyframe. See, I was being stupid and wasn't keyframing the wire rotation. Wire rotation. We'll put that back at zero and back at this frame. Orientation should be zero. Sometimes in the video, you're, you'll see that your video is moving due to time um, on the orientation. So every, you know, cut every like 10 frame, 20 frames, you'll want to put it at zero again so it stays. Okay, we can see right, that it's going angle wise and rotating up until about that frame. Now we can adjust the um, angles and such. Sorry about that. So we might want to give this a bit more orientation and then a lot of spin and adjust it so it's just above the fingers and bring that orientation down a bit. And you can see my hand is basically at a U, so we're going to put a lot of spin in that, drag that down here, give it a bit more orientation. Now you can see it's practically at a U, so about right there. I'll line this more upward so it looks like I'm holding it. Now we want to bring this back up to about there and bring this sucker's rotation there. So you can see this is a frame by frame process um, animation. You can bring it back to about, bring it there, bring it there. And we can see my hand is about to launch it, so we're going to want to make it flat again. Or as close to flat as we want to make it. A lot of keyframing in this kind of setup, this effect. Here we go, we can see my hand is launching the video. If we rotate the orientation, we can drag it. This part is where you can do a lot. I'm going to curve it, curve the line here, I don't know if you can see it, and then bring it to about there. The next frame, this thing's going to be about here, and you're just going to want to spin the orientation so it's like completely opposite, so it spins fast, like you gave it um, good speed. So drag it off and then just adjust the orientation so it's like that. So it's really, it looks like it's, whoops, grab the x-axis x-axis. Spin it really fast and good. In this frame it should disappear but you want to give it that final spin. Okay, so we go back to the beginning of everything. We can see... wait... let me click the hand so we don't see all that. So we go here we can see what the total effect looks like when you're done with the animation process. looks pretty nice and solid. Uh, might want to do some more tweaking with the throw, maybe some more spin action. Maybe not such a big spin there, but I don't know. The last step you want to do is, if we did a RAM preview right now of everything that's going on, let that load real quick. If we let it do a RAM preview, it's going to 
gonna finish up here in a second. It's got a buffer. And there we go. And okay, we watch this. We can see that after one sec. We can see after it's off the screen, it keeps going. You could hear that. It keeps going off screen. So what you're gonna do is go to the last frame of it and go so that's the frame right there and then now it's officially off screen go one more frame and then hold control shift D oh whoops I did the wrong video make sure you select your TV video control shift D and that separates the two different layers and this is the rest of it just delete that and now you have it stop after it's off screen and do the rest